Table of Contents Sweden Sweden is officially the Kingdom of Sweden. In Swedish, Sverigear or Kungariket Sverigear. Sweden is located on the Scandinavian Peninsula in Northern Europe. Here are the Scandinavian countries. Finland is usually considered to be a Scandinavian country, along with Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. However, Linguistically and to some extent culturally it differs from those three countries. Norway lies to the west and Finland to the northeast. There is a long coastline extending along the Gulf of Bothnia and the Baltic Sea on the east. Finland shares a border with Sweden on the west. And also for a time was under the rule of Sweden. The province of Lappi is part of Lapland that also encompasses parts of Sweden, Norway, and Russia. About 3,000 Laps live in the Finnish part of Lapland and they speak their own distinctive language. There is a shorter coastline along the Skagerrak and Kattegat Straits on the southwest, and a narrow strait separates Sweden from Denmark in the far south. The narrow strait between Denmark and Sweden near Copenhagen is called the Air Sund, or the Sound. Here is the Air Sund. The narrow strait between Denmark and Sweden. How big is Sweden? Sweden extends some 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometers, from north to south. And 310 miles, 500 kilometers, from east to west. The name Sweden was derived from the Svir or Suons, as mentioned as early as the year 98, by the Roman author Tacitus. Stockholm has been the capital of Sweden since 1523. Sweden has an area of 174,000 square miles, 450,000 square kilometers, which makes it just a little bit larger than the U.S. state of California. Here is a comparison of the areas of the Scandinavian countries in square kilometers. We see that Finland, Norway and Sweden are all about the same size. But that Denmark is very much smaller. Finland is just a little bit larger than Norway in area. And somewhat smaller than Sweden. Now the Netherlands and the United Kingdom are also included for purposes of comparison. Here is a physical or relief map of Europe. We see that most of Norway and Sweden are indeed mountainous although Denmark is remarkably flat. Although Norway is almost entirely mountainous with very little land available for farming, there are some relatively level areas in the southern part of Sweden. However, almost all of Denmark is suitable for farming. The population of Sweden The population of Sweden is about 9 million, which is a little more than New Jersey and a little less than Michigan. Sweden has a population of 9 million, twice that of Norway, and almost twice that of Denmark. Here the Netherlands, the UK, and the US have been included for comparison. Sweden, along with Norway and Finland has a small population density, especially when compared with Denmark, which is by far the most densely populated of the Scandinavian countries. Here is a comparison of the population density of several countries. We see that Sweden is very sparsely populated as compared to Denmark, the Netherlands and the UK. We see that the population density of Sweden is about two-thirds that of the United States. Sweden has a population density of 20 per square kilometer. That is very close to the population density of Iowa, Arkansas or Oklahoma. The land in Sweden slopes gently downward from the range of high mountains, running along the Norwegian border, eastward to the Baltic Sea. Much of the northern two-thirds of the country is hilly or mountainous, and only the southern third where most of the population lives is relatively flat. Only about 
of the land is suitable for agriculture, mostly in the south. Sweden can be divided into three regions. To the north is Norrland, a vast mountain and forest region. In central Sweden is Svealand, an expansive lowland in the eastern highland in the west in the south is Jotaland. Jotaland includes the Småland highlands and, at the southern extremity, the small but rich plains of Skåne. This is Skåne, the southernmost province of Sweden. In the far north, the region of Lapland overlaps Norrland and northern Finland. These are the main cities of Sweden. Here are the five most populous cities in Sweden. Note that they are all in the southern part of the country. Jotabauri is the second largest city in Sweden after Stockholm and is the country's largest port. Here are the cities in Sweden with over 100,000 population. Note that these also are all in the southern part of the country. Here is the population distribution of Sweden. We see that most of the population lives in the southern third of the country, mostly in the region around Stockholm and on the east coastal regions near Jotabori and Malmö, and across from Denmark. The history of Sweden is very much intertwined with the neighboring Scandinavian countries. At various times in history the Scandinavian countries were under various unions and joint rulers, as this chart shows. The Scandinavians have close cultural and historical ties, and except for the Finns spoke very similar languages. As a result, there were at various times attempts made to unify these countries. However, differences that did exist in terms of geography, economic life, and outlook made a permanent union difficult. Now we will go back to the Viking era. Between the years 750 to 1000, the Swedes and other Scandinavians reconfigured European society when the Vikings undertook marauding, trading, and colonizing expeditions. For over 200 years, from about 800 to 1000, Europe was ravaged and plundered by the Vikings. The Vikings not only raided and plundered wide areas of Europe, but they also settled and colonized various places and left a lasting influence. The Vikings traveled immense distance from their Scandinavian homeland. To the west they conquered and held for generations large parts of Britain and Ireland. They established colonies in Iceland and Greenland and even for a while in far off North America. To the south they occupied northern France. They raided cities along the coasts of Portugal and Spain. They sailed through then Straits of Gibraltar to Italy plundered Sicily and the northern shores of Africa and attacked Constantinople, the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. They went over land and down rivers through Russia down to the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, and established settlements such as Kiev in the present-day Ukraine. What caused the Vikings to leave their Scandinavian homeland and make such long and arduous journeys? There are several possible theories. Overpopulation at home, conflict between various groups at the home, desire for plunder, sense of adventure and desire for heroism, relative helplessness of their victims. Probably it was some combination of all of these. The Vikings were made up of landowning chieftains and clan heads, their retainers, freemen, and any energetic young clan members who sought adventure and booty overseas. At home these Scandinavians were independent farmers, but at sea they were raiders and pillagers. The origin of the word Viking is not certain. One theory is that the Vikings burning, plundering, and killing earned them the name Vikinger, meaning pirate in the early Scandinavian languages. For some centuries the Scandinavians had remained quietly in their northern home. But in the 8th century a change, possibly economic, possibly political, 
occurred in this area and provoked among them a spirit of unrest and adventurous enterprise. During the Viking period the Scandinavian countries seemed to have possessed a practically inexhaustible surplus of manpower and leaders of ability who could organize groups of warriors into conquering bands. These Viking bands would travel the seas in their long boats and attack cities and towns along the coasts of Europe with hit-and-run raids. The term Viking Age has come to denote those years from about 800 to 1050, when Scandinavians set out on innumerable plundering expeditions abroad. Surplus population Superior ships and weapons Well-developed military organization and the spirit of adventure seemed to have combined to cause this great movement. The Vikings were pagan seafaring warriors. They were also known as Norsemen or Northmen. Their homelands were the Scandinavian countries of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. First the Vikings raided England. Then they attacked Ireland and the Shetland, Orkney, and Faroe Islands. Eventually the Vikings ranged as far west as Iceland and Greenland, and established colonies there. They even settled briefly in North America. The Vikings went south into Russia as far as the Ukraine and the Black Sea. In fact, the name Russia is derived from the name the Vikings were called, Rus. The Vikings traveled all over the Mediterranean Sea to Sicily. Then to Italy. And then even as far as Constantinople. The Swedes established a kingdom in Russia. And founded the cities of Novgorod and Kiev. Both of which are major cities today. With Kiev being the capital and largest city of Ukraine. Norwegians colonized parts of the British Isles the Faroe Islands, and Iceland. From there they pushed on to Greenland and the coasts of Labrador and Newfoundland. The Danes conquered large parts of England in the 7th to 9th centuries. The Danes conquered a large part of England, which became known as Dane Law, or Danish Law. The Danes established a colony in northern France called Normandy. Normandy got its name from the Norse or Northmen. The daring sea rovers to whom these unusual achievements were due are commonly known as Vikings, and the period of their activity, extending from the middle of the 8th century to the beginning of the 11th, is popularly known as the Viking Age. It was due to their attacks upon settlements in an ultimate conquest of England that led to the Scandinavian influence upon the English language. For over 200 years, from about 800 to 1000, Europe was ravaged and plundered by this fierce group of warriors from the sea. The Vikings not only raided and plundered wide areas of Europe, but they also settled and colonized various places and left a lasting influence. Norsemen were trained from childhood to be strong and self-reliant. Running, jumping, and wrestling took the place of reading, writing, and arithmetic. Their other subjects were skating, skiing, snowshoeing, swimming, rowing, and riding horseback. As soon as a child could carry a weapon, he was taught to thrust a sword, to swing a battle axe, and to throw a spear. A part of their success was due to their religion. For the Norsemen's gods were warriors too. Thor the Thunderer made constant war against the ice and snow giants of the north. The chief god, Odin, presided over Valhalla, the warrior's heaven. Death in battle was considered the most honorable death. Only by that death could a Norseman enter Valhalla. So, the Norsemen battled unafraid and joyful, calling upon their gods to help them. The Vikings were masters of shipbuilding. Some of the Viking ships, or long ships, were quite long for that time. They were strongly built of oak, and from 40 to 60 oarsmen sat on the rowers' benches. These dragon ships, 
as they were often called, usually appeared in a bay at about dawn. As soon as the ships reached the beach, fierce warriors jumped out, shouting battle cries. Armed with swords and battle axes, they attacked the sleeping villagers. They killed many of them, captured some of the women and young men, and gathered all the loot that their ships could carry. Then they sailed away. The ships were pointed at each end, so that they could go forward or backward without turning around. They had tall curved prows, usually carved in the shapes of dragons. The ships were very maneuverable and had a shallow draft so that they could go up rivers and land on beaches. The Vikings often sailed far up various rivers such as the Thames as far as London and the Seine as far as Paris on their expeditions. Although the Vikings did on occasion sail far out into the ocean, such as to Iceland and Greenland, they preferred to sail close to shore so that they could cook their meals and spend the night on land. During the Viking era, part of southern Sweden was occupied by Denmark. In the 12th through 14th centuries Sweden was an independent country. Although large parts of southern Sweden were occupied by Denmark, Sweden also included the area of present-day Finland. At various times in history, there were unions and alliance between the Scandinavian countries in particular. In 1397, Erik of Pomerania was crowned king of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden at Kalmar, forming the Kalmar Union. The Kalmar Union united Sweden with the other Scandinavian countries in the 15th century. The Kalmar Union included Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Pomerania, now part of Germany. In 1521, Gustav Eriksson Vasa, from 1523 known as King Gustav I of Sweden, re-established separation of the Swedish crown from the Kalmar Union. In the 16th through 18th century Sweden was an independent country, although part of southern Sweden was still occupied by Denmark. Sweden still included the area of present-day Finland. Swedish expansion, 1617 to 1660. The 17th century saw the rise of Sweden under King Gustavus Adolphus as one of the great powers in Europe, due to successful participation in the Thirty Years' War. The Baltic became essentially a Swedish sea. Sweden had control of Finland, Estonia, Latvia, and small parts of Russia, Germany, and Norway. Sweden had control of Finland, Estonia, Latvia, and small parts of Russia. Sweden also had control of parts of northern Germany. These are areas under Swedish control in 1700. 18th century Imperial Russia under Peter the Great defeated Sweden in the Great Northern War in 1809. Russia split off the eastern half of Sweden, creating the Russian Grand Duchy of Finland. The Kalmar Union, 1397-1523 After Sweden broke away from the Kalmar Union, there was a confederation between Denmark and Norway. This union ended in 1814. Norway and Sweden were then united until Norway became an independent country in 1905. Then in the 19th century Sweden acquired Norway from Denmark in exchange for Sweden giving up Finland to Russia in 1809. Although a military power during the 17th century, Sweden has not participated in any war in almost two centuries. Sweden succeeded in remaining a neutral country during World War I and World War II, with a brief exception for the Winter War. It continued to stay non-aligned during the Cold War, and still today is not a member of any military alliance. Remaining outside of World War II gave the Swedes a great advantage when Europe was to be rebuilt after the war, ensuring them a particularly high standard of living for many decades and allowing the foundation of an extensive welfare state.
The first ceremony to award the Nobel Prize, founded by the industrialist Alfred Nobel, was held at the old Royal Academy of Music in Stockholm in 1901. Beginning in 1902, the prizes have been formally awarded by the King of Sweden. In 1905 Norway became independent of Sweden. The climate of Stockholm Will it be warm? Or will it be cold in Stockholm? The great majority of the population of Scandinavia lives in the region between about 55 degrees north latitude and 60 degrees north latitude. Stockholm is at 59 degrees north latitude. This corresponds to a region in northern Canada about 1500 miles north of New York City, which is at about 40 degrees north latitude. Miami is about 1000 miles south of New York City at about 25 degrees north latitude. Stockholm is way up north, is it very cold up there? No, not nearly as much as you might think. Despite Scandinavia's far northern latitude, most of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden is a moderate climate tempered by the warm waters of the North Atlantic Current, which is a continuation of the Gulf Stream. For example, Bergen, on the west coast of Norway, is at a latitude of 61 degrees north, which is about the same as Anchorage, Alaska. However, Bergen has an average temperature of 35 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.7 degrees Celsius, in January, and 61 degrees Fahrenheit, 16.1 degrees Celsius, in July. Only in the most remote inland areas of Scandinavia are the winters harsh. The Gulf Stream originates in the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf Stream then flows northwestward along the coast of the United States and then further eastward in the Atlantic Ocean. The North Atlantic Drift is a continuation of the Gulf Stream and flows northwestward toward northern Europe and Scandinavia. The warm waters of the Gulf Stream keep the temperatures of the UK and Scandinavia much warmer than would otherwise be the case. This shows temperatures in January in the Northern Hemisphere. We see that especially in the western coastal regions of Scandinavia, the temperatures are around 20 or 30 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than regions further inland. This shows temperatures in July in the Northern Hemisphere. We see that especially in the western coastal regions of Scandinavia. The temperatures are now about the same as regions further inland. Despite Scandinavia's far northern latitude, most of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden has a moderate climate tempered by the warm waters of the North Atlantic Current, which is a continuation of the Gulf Stream. Here are temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Stockholm together with the yearly average temperature. Here are average monthly temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Stockholm. Here are average monthly temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Stockholm. The winter high temperatures in January are in the 26 degree Fahrenheit range and the lows go down to 16 degrees Fahrenheit. The summertime high temperatures go up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in July and the lows go down to a somewhat chilly 53 degrees Fahrenheit. Rainfall in Stockholm Here is average monthly precipitation in inches throughout the year in Stockholm, together with the yearly total. We see that late summer and early fall months are those with the greatest precipitation. The hours of daylight in Stockholm vary considerably throughout the year due to its northerly latitude. What time is it in Stockholm? Here are the time zones and the time in various places in terms of standard time, not daylight savings time. Here are the European time zones. 
Sweden is at GMT plus 1, as is most of Western and Central Europe. This is one hour ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. When it's 12 noon in London, it is 1 p.m. in Stockholm. Swedish is the official language. Swedish is closely related to Norwegian, with which it is mutually intelligible, and it is also very closely related to Danish. Although the other Scandinavian languages, excepting Finnish, are close relatives, they are sufficiently different to be understood easily only by those schooled or experienced in the effort. Many educated or urban Swedes have learned to speak a second language. English had replaced German as the most popular foreign language. Here's an example of numbers from 1 to 10 in English, Swedish, and Norwegian. Now Danish and Icelandic have been added. We still see a close relationship. We see that Norwegian, Danish, Swedish, and Icelandic are all very similar, and actually not much different from English. We also note that the numbers in Finnish, which is not in the Indo-European language family, are considerably different and bear little or no resemblance to numbers in the other languages. Here I have added it two other Germanic languages to the table, Dutch and German. We see a strong resemblance among all of these Germanic languages. We again note that Finnish is not a Germanic, or even an Indo-European language. There are these three characters in the Swedish alphabet that people outside of Scandinavia are usually not familiar with. The economy of Sweden. Principal industries of Sweden are iron and steel, precision equipment, bearings, radio and telephone parts, armaments, wood pulp and paper products, processed foods, and motor vehicles. Volvo is Latin for eye roll, and although fitting well to their products, vehicles, it was originally a name for a ball bearing being developed by SKF. Volvo is a Swedish world-leading manufacturer of commercial vehicles, buses and construction equipment, drive systems for marine and industrial applications, aerospace components and services. Volvo was founded in 1927 in Yotabori as a spin-off from rollerball bearing maker SKF. Volvo Cars, the automobile manufacturer, has been owned by the Ford Motor Company since 1999. The Volvo Group today has approximately 76,000 employees, has production in 25 countries, and operates in more than 130 markets. Saab, founded in 1937 in Sweden as Svenska Aeroplan Aktibo Laget, Swedish Airplane Corporation, Abbreviated Saab where AB stands for Aktivo Laget which is Swedish for corporation. Saab was founded as a Swedish aircraft company in 1937. After World War II, the company diversified its business and started to manufacture Saab automobiles in 1947 and the data Saab computers in the late 1950s. In 1969 Saab acquired the truck maker Scania AB. And between 1969 and 1995 the company was called Saab Scania. General Motors bought half of Saab automobiles in 1990 and acquired the rest a decade later. Saab has been making airplanes since the 1930s. The last civilian models made by Saab were the Saab 340 and Saab 2000. Both were mid-range. Turboprop powered. Passenger planes. The development and the manufacturing of these airplanes has all been in Linköping, Sweden. Currently, the main focus of the aircraft production is fighter aircraft, with the recent JAS 39 Gripen as the flagship model. This is the Saab Gripen. This is the Saab 37 Victon. Stockholm. Stockholm is called the Venus of the North.
and is built on the mainland in 14 islands. By virtue of its location, Stockholm is regarded as one of the most beautiful capital cities in the world. Stockholm Orientation Stockholm is connected to Lake Malay Ren on the west, and by the Salt Sun to the Baltic Sea on the east. The islands and mainland are connected by over 50 bridges. These are some of the many bridges of Stockholm. Here is Stockholm at the junction of Lake Malay Ren and the Salt Sun or Salt Bay, an arm of the Baltic Sea, opposite the Gulf of Finland. The original nucleus of their city is the city between the bridges Gamla Stone, Old Town, consisting of Stads Island, Helgeens Island, and Ritter Island. Cruise ships dock close to the center of the city, about 10 to 15 minutes by taxi, or 30 to 45 minutes on foot. This shows the location of the cruise ship with respect to the Gamla Stone, or Old Town, and the Royal Palace. The first part of the name, stock, means log, while the second part, holm, means islet, and refers to the islet Stadsholm and in central Stockholm, which for centuries constituted the main part of Stockholm. These islands are connected by old bridges and modern overpasses to city districts occupying the mainland of a plan to the north, and that of Sutter Manland to the south. The modern city center is on the mainland, just to the north of Old Town. Stockholm is Sweden's leading industrial area, producing metal and machine manufacturing, paper and printing, foodstuffs, and chemicals. Stockholm is also the country's chief wholesale and retail center, and serves as the headquarters of many banks and insurance companies. Stockholm is also the second largest port, Yotabauri being the first. The national government's many offices are a major employer in the city, as are various educational, scientific, and cultural institutions. These are some major points of interest in Stockholm. Number 1. The Old Town Gamla Stone The Old Town Stockholm started here, 750 years ago on the small Gamla Stone, or Old Town Island, that is barely 500 meters in diameter. Several of the city's major sites are in Gamla Stone, including the Royal Palace and the Cathedral from the mid-13th century. This is Gamla Stone with the Cathedral, the Royal Palace, and the Riksdag. Or Parliament. This is a closer view of the cathedral, the royal palace, and the Riksdag Parliament. Sweden has not been involved in any war since 1520, so there has been no destruction by wars in Stockholm. Here is the great market of the old town, or Gamla Stone. The first floor of the buildings shown here are medieval, and the upper floors were added in the 17th century. The streaks of Gamla Stone still follow the medieval layout, but numerous buildings have been added, rebuilt or extended, particularly in the 17th century. In the 17th century Sweden was one of Europe's major military powers, and the center of a vast empire that encompassed the whole of the Baltic Sea coastline. This is a view of Old Town from City Hall Tower of Stockholm. Most historic buildings date from the time of the 17th century. So Stockholm's old town has a dis This is a street in Gamla Stone. The old town. This is another street in Gamla Stone. The old town. This is another street in Gamla Stone. The old town. Number 2. The Vasa Museum. On August 10th. 1628, the ship Vasa set sail for the first time. A sudden gust of wind caused her to list so that water poured in through the lowest tier of open gun ports. And she sank quickly. This was supposed to have been Sweden's mightiest ship, 
and to have strengthened Sweden's command of the Baltic. The Vasa was salvaged 330 years later in 1956. This is a model of the Vasa. The Vasa Museum is Scandinavia's most popular museum. The Vasa was salvaged in 1961. This is the Vasa Museum. This is inside the Vasa Museum. Number 3. The Skansen Open Air Museum. The Skansen was founded in 1891 as the world's first open air museum. It has been the number one attraction in Stockholm for more than a century. This shows the location of the Skansen Open Air Museum. Some 150 houses and farmsteads are assembled here from all over Sweden. Number 4. The Royal Palace With 608 rooms, the Stockholm Royal Palace is the biggest palace in the world still used by a head of state. The palace houses the personal offices of the monarch, Carl XVI Gustav, and the other members of the Swedish royal family, as well as the administrative offices of the Royal Court of Sweden. The palace is also used for representative purposes by the king while performing his duties as the head of state. The palace houses several of the greatest and most interesting sites in Stockholm. The royal apartments, the Hall of State, the apartments of the Orders of Chivalry, the Treasury, the Trikro Nor Palace Museum, the Armory, and the Museum of Antiquities of Gustav III. The palace has been built on top of the foundations of a previous medieval castle, Trikro Nor or Three Crowns, dating back to the mid-13th century, and which was ravaged by fire in 1697. The remnants of the old castle can be seen in the Tree Cronor Palace Museum. The Royal Palace has 608 rooms. The Stockholm Palace, in Swedish, Stockholm Slot, is located on Stadsholmen, island of the city, in the Gamla Stone. It is next to the Riksdag, Sweden's parliament. Although this is the official residence and major royal palace of the Swedish monarch, the private residence of the royal family is Drottningholm Palace. This is the palace entrance and Swedish royal guard. These are the royal guards in front of the royal palace. Number 5 the Cathedral Store Shirkin. The Cathedral Store Shirkin was first mentioned in writing in 1279 and became a Lutheran Protestant church in 1527. Today it is the Cathedral of Stockholm. This shows the location of the Cathedral Store Shirkin. The interior holds many unique artifacts. The most famous is the statue of St. George and the Dragon. Made in wood by Bernt Notkin 1489. Number 6. Drottningholm Palace. A former royal summer residence. The Drottningholm Palace is today the private residence of the royal family. The Drottningholm Palace is on the island of Leven. And only 10 miles. Or 15 kilometers from downtown Stockholm. The Drottningholm Palace is a beautiful example of Baroque art and has magnificent rooms from the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. The Drottningholm Palace is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is the Drottningholm Palace. These are the Drottningholm Palace Gardens, as viewed from the palace. This is the rear view of the Drottningholm Palace. Number 7 Boat Tour Stockholm's canals and waterfront offer opportunities for relaxing boat tours. These are the departure points for the boat tours. This is a waterway cruise in Stockholm. This is a view of a waterway cruise in Stockholm.
the Riksdagshuset, the Swedish National Parliament Building. Dates from 1904. This shows the location of the Riksdagshuset in Gamla Stone. The Riksdagshuset is very close to the Royal Palace. This is the Riksdagshuset. The Nordiska Museet, or Nordic Museum, shows everyday life in Sweden from the 1520s to the present day. This is the Stockholm City Hall, or Stockholm Stadshus. This shows the location of the Stockholm City Hall. This is an interior view of the Stockholm City Hall. The blue room in the City Hall is the site of the annual Nobel Prize dinner. The Swedish History Museum, in Swedish, Historiska Museet, is one of the largest museums in Sweden, with more than 10 million artifacts. The Swedish History Museum has the largest Viking exhibition in the world. The collection has objects from around 800 to 1050, including weapons, archaeological finds from the Viking Age trading centers and foreign objects brought home from travels and raids in other parts of the world, as well as thousands of finds related to the everyday life during that period. This is the Stockholm Theater. This is the Gamla Stone as viewed from the from the City Hall. Microsoft PowerPoint. Please select one and only one shape and try again. OK. The Stockholm Grand Hotel is a five-star hotel opened in 1874. Since 1901, the Nobel Prize laureates and their families have been guests at the hotel, as well as several celebrities and world leaders. The National Museum of Fine Art in Stockholm has Sweden's finest art collection. This shows the location of the National Museum of Fine Art in Stockholm. The art collection includes painting and sculpture, decorative art, and a department of modern applied art. The Concerthaus Concerthuset is the main venue for orchestral music in Stockholm. It opened in 1926. This is the Sergelstorg with the Kulturhuset. Gothenburg, or in Swedish, Jotabori, is the second largest city in Sweden after Stockholm, and the fifth largest in the Nordic countries. Jotabauri is situated on the west coast of Sweden. Stockholm, on the other hand, is on the opposite coast, the east coast facing the Baltic Sea. Between Jotabauri and Denmark is the Kattegat. Just to the north is the Skagerrak, and beyond that is the North Sea. Due to the advantageous location of Yotabori in the center of Scandinavia, trade and shipping have always played a major role in the city's economic history. The population of city of Yotabori is 520,000, and the metropolitan area population is 930,000. A narrow fjord called Yota Elf leads from the Kattegat up to Yotabori. This is a view of the Yota Elf Fjord that leads from the Kattegat up to Yotabauri. Here is the Yota Elf Fjord and Yotabauri. Yotabauri is the largest seaport in the Nordic countries. Yotabauri was home base of the Swedish East India Company. Founded in 1731 for the purpose of conducting trade with the Far East. It was in business until 1813. From the founding of the city until the late 1970s, Yotabauri was a world-leading city in shipbuilding, with shipyards such as Eriksberg's Mechaniska Verkstens AB, Yotaverken, Irendals Varvet, and Lindholmens Varv. Apart from trade, the second pillar of Yotabauri has traditionally been manufacturing, and industry which significantly contributes to the city's wealth. Major companies operating plants in the area include SKF, Volvo, and Ericsson. Banking and finance are also important trades, as well as the tourist industry. 
SKF was established in Yotebori in 1907. It is a worldwide manufacturer and supplier of ball and roller bearings, linear motion products, precision bearings, spindles, and seals. Volvo Cars is the largest employer in Yotebori, not including jobs and supply companies. Volvo Cars was founded in Yotebori in 1927. Volvo is Latin for I roll, and although fitting well to their products, vehicles, it was originally a name for a ball bearing being developed by SKF. AB Volvo is a Swedish world leading manufacturer of commercial vehicles, buses and construction equipment, drive systems for marine and industrial applications, aerospace components and services. Volvo was founded in 1927 in the city of Yotebori as a spin-off from roller ball bearing maker SKF. Volvo Cars, the automobile manufacturer, has been owned by the Ford Motor Company since 1999. The Volvo Group today has approximately 83,000 employees, production in 25 countries, and operates in more than 130 markets. Yotebori is home to many students, as the city includes both the University of Yotebori and Chalmers University of Technology. The History of Yotebori King Gustavus Adolphus commanded that a new city be built on the rugged west coast of Sweden, along the banks of the Yota Elf which flows into the Kattegat, and on towards the treacherous North Sea. Dutch engineers experienced in, the challenges and difficulties of construction in deep mud and marshy terrain were commissioned to design the canaled city. Built to serve as Sweden's gateway with the West, the city quickly grew into a vital Swedish port and center of international trade. Yotebori was founded over 350 years ago as a defense against repeated Danish attack. It was designed and built with the help of the Dutch and the Scots. Its role was to be a gateway of trade and commerce to Europe and the Far East. The city was heavily influenced by the Dutch. Dutch city planners were contracted to build the city as they had the skills needed to build in the marshy areas around the city. The town was designed after Dutch cities like Amsterdam, and therefore the plan of the streets and canals closely resembles that of Jakarta, which was built by the Dutch around the same time. The Dutch initially won political power, and it was not until 1652 that the Swedes acquired political power over Yotebori. Heavy city walls were built during the 17th century. These city walls were torn down after about 1810, because the development of cannons made such walls less valuable as a defense. Along with the Dutch, the town also was influenced by the Scots, who came to settle in Yotebauri. Many became people of high profile. In 1841, the Scotsman, Alexander Keeler, founded the Yotaverkan Shipbuilding Company that still exists today. His son James Keeler gifted Keeler Park to the city in 1906. The Scottish influence can still be felt in Yotebauri in the present day with names like Glen and Morgan, which in the rest of Sweden are rare, but are not uncommon in Yotebauri, as is the use of a Scottish-sounding R in the local dialect. In the 18th century, Fishing was the most important industry. However, in 1731 when the Swedish East India Company was founded, the city flourished due to its foreign trade with highly profitable commercial expeditions to Asian countries. After two decades of nearly continuous war, by the 1720s, Sweden had lost most of its power in Europe and was in serious trouble. A wealthy Swedish merchant, Henrik Koenig, and business partner, Colin Campbell, an enterprising Scotsman, petitioned Sweden's King Frederick, 
The men presented the king with the fact that the Dutch and British were gaining great wealth by trading with China and the islands of the East. And why should Sweden be left out? In 1732, Campbell sailed from Yotte Bowery loaded with lumber and iron to trade with the tea, porcelain and spice merchants of the Far East. Having faced great danger at sea and the loss of many of the crew, Campbell and his ship returned to Yotte Bowery a year and a half later, loaded with tons of precious cargo from China and the Far East. This was the first of 124 successful voyages, launched over the next 80 years by the Swedish East India Company. Yotte Bowery developed into Sweden's main harbour for trade towards the west, and with the Swedish emigration to North America increasing, Yotte Bowery became Sweden's main point of departure. The impact of Yotte Bowery as a main port of embarkation for Swedish emigrants is reflected by Yotte Bowery in Nebraska, a small Swedish settlement in the United States. For the vast majority of the emigrants, the last sight they ever had of their homeland was along the banks of the Yotte Elf, on the rugged west coast of Sweden, where over two centuries earlier King Gustavus Adolphus the Great commanded, We shall build it here. In the 19th century, Yotte Bowery evolved into a modern industrial city that continued on into the 20th century. The population increased tenfold in the century, from 13,000 in 1800 to 130,000 in 1900. In the 20th century, major companies that developed included SKF, established in 1907, and Volvo, established in 1926. Sites of Yotte Bowery This shows the overall situation of Yotte Bowery on the Oda Elf Fjord, and the canals called the Rosenlunds Kanalen running through the city. Here is the Yotte Bowery area showing major points of interest. This is the central part of Yotte Bowery with major points of interest. Again. We see the central part of Yotte Bowery with major points of interest. In the 19th century, the first important town plan after the founding of Yotte Bowery was created led to the construction of the Kungsport Savenin, commonly known as just the Avenin, the Avenue. It is the major avenue in the city and a smaller counterpart of the Champs Elysees of Paris. It was created in the 1860s and 1870s as a result of an international town planning competition. With a total length of about 1,000 meters, the Kungsports of an inn stretches from the old moat at the edge of the older part of Yotte Bowery, and ends at the Yotte Platz in Square, where the Yotte Bowery Museum of Art and several other cultural institutions are located. From the Yoda Platz and in the heart of the city all the way down to the old city, the Avenin is lined with cafes, restaurants, and shops. Yoda Platz and is a public square in Yota Bowery. At the southern end of Kungsports Avenin, the Kingsgate Avenue, the city's main street. The square was inaugurated when Yotte Bowery held a major international industrial exhibition in 1923, celebrating the city's 300th anniversary. Yotte Platzen is the cultural hub of Yotte Bowery, enclosed by the Yotte Bowery Concert Hall, where the Yotte Bowery Symphony Orchestra resides, the Yotte Bowery Museum of Art, the Yotte Bowery City Theater, and the City Library. At the center of the Yota Platzen is the Poseidon statue by Carl Millis. This statue has become one of the symbols of the city. The popular tram system of Yota Bowery covers most of the city, which makes it the most extensive in Scandinavia. Here is shown a vintage tourist tram on Kudensport Savenen. Yota Bowery Concert Hall was built in 1935. The architect was Nilziner Eriksson, a major advocate of functionalism. However, the concert hall has a neoclassical exterior look, due to the surrounding area at Gadaplitzen where the building is placed.
The Yotebo Ri Museum of Art at Chiyotaplatsen is renowned for its collection of late 19th century Nordic art. The museum also houses older and contemporary art, both Nordic and international. The museum building was created for the international exhibition in Yotebo Ri in 1923 celebrating the city's 300th anniversary and represents the monumental neoclassical style in Nordic architecture. It is built of a yellow brick called Yotebo Ri brick because of the materials frequent use in the city. A major attraction of the museum is the lavishly decorated Furstenberg Gallery. Named after a leading Yotebo Ri art donor, Pontus Furstenberg, and his wife Cathilda, Kungsgatun Shopping Street is lively with boutiques cinemas, and cafes. Fred's Gatun is a pedestrian street for many different kinds of products. There are at least 180 shops on Fred's Gatun. These are some major streets in Yotab Bowery. There are very few houses left from the 17th century when the city was founded, since all but the military and royal houses were built of wood. One example is Skansen Kronan, a redoubt in the district of Haga. Skansen Kronan was built in 1698 and was fitted with 23 guns. Skansen Kronan was originally built outside the city walls, but today is the center of Yotebauri on a hill in the city district of Haga. The fortress and the twin counterpart, Skansen Leshonet were built as part of the defenses against possible Danish attack on Jotabauri from the south, and thus had a similar purpose as the Elfsborg fortress. The first major architecturally interesting period is the 18th century, when the Swedish East India Company made Jotabauri an important trade city. Imposing stone houses with a classical look were erected around the canals. One example from this period is the East India House, which today houses the Yotabauri City Museum. The museum was created in 1861, with the British Victoria and Albert Museum as model. The museum displays Yotabauri in West Sweden's history from the Viking Age to present day. The museum covers the history of the Swedish East India Company, the city's relationship with the sea, and the country's development since the time of the Vikings. The museum is also home to the modern replica of the 18th century merchant ship, Yotabauri. In the 19th century, the wealthy bourgeoisie began to move outside the city walls. The working class lived in the overcrowded city district of Haga in wooden houses. Haga is renowned for its picturesque wooden houses. 19th century atmosphere and cafes. Originally a working class suburb of the city with a rather bad reputation, it was gradually transformed into a popular visiting place for tourists and locals. A major renovation of the area was made in the 1980s, when houses were either renovated or torn down and replaced by postmodernistic replicas. The perhaps most significant type of houses of the city, the Landshuft and Gethusen, were built in the end of the 19th century. They are three-story houses, with the first floor in stone, and the other two in wood. A very important period in the architectural history of the city was the early 20th century, when the National Romantic style dominated. Among the many monumental buildings erected is the Mass Dugget Church. Built in 1914, the church tower is 60 meters high. The church represents the national romantic style in Nordic architecture and has become one of the symbols of Yotebori and a popular tourist attraction. The Mass Dugget Church is on a high hill, Mass Dugget, close to the city and near the Yota Elf, and is a striking sight. The Otabauri Central Station is in the heart of the city, just next to Nordsten and Drottning Torget. The building has been renovated and expanded numerous times since the opening in 1858. In 2003, 
A major reconstruction was finished which brought the 19th century building into the 21st century. Expanding the capacity for trains, travelers, and shopping. The Yotabauri Central Station is the main railway station of Yotabauri, and the second largest in Sweden after Stockholm Central Station. Not far from the central station is Skans Kaskrapen, or more commonly known as the Lipstick, erected in 1989. It is 86 meters high, with 22 floors, and colored in red and white stripes. This shows the location of the Skans Kaskrapen in the Lillebommen district, near the Bark and Viking ship and the Yoder Elf Bridge. It is possible to take the elevator to the highest floor of the Skanskaskrapen, where there is a cafe called Gathaborg at Kicken, the Yotebori Lookout, with good views of the city. It is commonly referred to by people from Yotebori as Lofstiftet, the lipstick, Vattenstandet, the level of water, but also water erection, or Legahuset, the Lego house. Although the last known official name is just Lillebommen after its location. This is the Oscar Fredericks Kirka, or Oscar Frederick Church. The Yotabori Opera House was completed in 1994. The architect Johan Isaac Alex was inspired by the landscape and described his vision as something that makes your mind float over the squiggling landscape like the wings of a seagull. This shows the location of the Yotebo Reopera by the shore of Yota Elf. The Gustavus Adolphus Square is in the center of Old Yotebo Re. Surrounding the statue of Gustavus Adolphus is the City Hall, Stads Huset, and the former Exchange and Courthouse. Nearby is the attractive new Opera House, Fischkeshorica, or Fiskhullen is a fish market by the Rosenlands Canal Inn in the heart of Yotabori. Fischkeshorica was opened in 1874, and the name comes from the building's resemblance to a Gothic church. It opened in 1874. Fischkeshorica is an institution in Yotabori as well as a tourist magnet, housing one of the city's oldest trades, fishing. There is also a restaurant in the building. The Yotebo Real Law Court is in the Beaux-Arts style and used primarily as a law court. The Yotebo Re Synagogue at Stora Nugatun, near Drottning Torget, was built in 1855 and has 300 seats. This shows the location of the Yotebo Re Synagogue. The Crown House Crown Huset is Yotabauri's oldest official building and dates back to the mid-1600s. This was the storehouse of the King and City Armory. Today the building is home to workshops of local artisans. The Maritime Museum, or CEO Farts Museet, tells of Sweden's seafaring history dating back to the 1600s. Along the pier are more than a dozen different types of ships all open to visitors. The Elfsborg's fortress, near Elfsborg Fossning, is located on an island at the mouth of the harbor. This now restored fortress was built in the 1670s. Scandinavia's largest shopping center, Nordstrand, is located in central Jotabauri. Nine buildings that are interconnected constitute Nordstrand, the most popular European commercial center. This shows the location of Nordstan. Nordstan, in English, North Town, is one of the largest shopping centers in Scandinavia, with approximately 180 shops and 150 offices, and is Europe's most visited shopping center, with more than 35 million visitors in 2008. The Yotabori Botanical Garden is considered to be one of the most important botanical gardens in Europe. Next to the botanical garden is Gothenburg's largest park, Slotskogen, where the Natural History Museum, Naturhistoriska Museet, is located. The park is also home to the city's oldest observatory and a zoo. The Gothenburg Natural History Museum, Naturhistoriska Museet has a very large collection of preserved animals, 
insects and reptiles, plus geology exhibits. Lisa Beria is the largest amusement park in Scandinavia. Lisa Beria is located in the central part of the city. Lisa Beria is Scandinavia's largest amusement park by number of rides, and the most popular attraction in Sweden by the number of visitors per year, more than 3 million. Located near Lisa Beria is a science discovery center named Universium, opened in 2001. It is a part of the Evena Mangstrikat, which includes sites of interest like Scandinavium, Alevi, Svenska Mossen, Swedish Exhibition Center, Lisa Beria, and the Museum of World Culture. The Universium is divided into six sections, each containing experiment workshops and a collection of reptiles, fish, and insects. The sections of Universium are, Collegedo an exhibit about crime investigation, laser, space, and more. Explora an experiment department about humans and technology. Vatnitsvog, Watersway, the Swedish fishes and reptiles. Akvri Hullen, the ocean zone, marine animals. Regens Kogan, the rainforest. Tropical animals in their natural environment. And Dudligus Gunhitter, deadly beauties, deadly and poisonous reptiles. The University of Yotebori is one of the largest universities in the Nordic countries. Yotebori has two universities, both of which started off as colleges founded by private donations in the 19th century. The University of Yotebori has approximately 25,000 students and is one of the largest universities in Scandinavia, and one of the most versatile in Sweden. Chalmers University of Technology is a well-known university, located in Johanna Beria, two kilometers south of the inner city. Points of interest outside of Yotebori Ganibo Slot, Ganibo House, is a chateau south of Yotebori, in Molndal. It was built in a neoclassical architecture towards the end of the 18th century. The estate consists of a main building, and one of Sweden's finest and best preserved Baroque gardens. This is Jotabauri Harbour seen from the Elfsborg Bridge. Seen to the left is the ship HSS Stenakarisma, and to the right, the MS Steniskanden Avica. One of Yotebori's most popular natural tourist attractions is the southern Yotebori Archipelago, which is a set of many picturesque islands that can be reached by ferry boat. Within the archipelago, Elfsborg Fortress, Vinga, and Styrsa Islands are popular places to visit. The archipelago is completely car-free. Elfsborg is a large sea fortress that protected Yotebori, and medieval Sweden's only access to the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. The Vinga Lighthouse symbolizes the city. The Volvo Museum is 10 kilometers west of the Yotebori city center. The Volvo Museum has exhibits on the development of Sweden's leading vehicle manufacturer Volvo. From the first Volvo to the current cars trucks, buses and other products. The museum also contains many other exhibits, including Gabrielsson's and Larson's joint desk from the pioneering years. Will it be hot? Or will it be cold in Yotebauri? Yotabauri has an oceanic climate. Despite its high northern latitude, temperatures are quite mild throughout the year, and much warmer than places in similar latitude, or even somewhat further south, mainly because of the moderating influence of the warm Gulf Stream. During the summer, daylight extends 17 hours, but lasts only around 7 hours in late December.
Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Yotabori. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Yotabori. Here is the average monthly rainfall in inches throughout the year in Yotabori. Here is the average monthly rainfall in centimeters throughout the year in Yotabori. Lulia, Sweden. Lulia is in northern Sweden, at the northern end of the Gulf of Bothnia. Lulia is at 65.6 .6 degrees north latitude, just one degree south of the Arctic Circle. These are the daylight hours in Lulia. Because Lulia is just below the Arctic Circle, there is almost 24 hours of daylight in midsummer, but only about 4 hours in midwinter. Lulia has a population of 57,000 in the urban area and 73,000 including the connecting suburbs. Lulia is the capital of Norrbotten County in the far north of Sweden. Norrbotten is the biggest county in Sweden, covering almost one-fourth of the land area of the country. Lulia is located at the coast of the Swedish region of Norrbotten in northern Sweden. The original location of Lulia is the old town of Gamlstad, a short distance away. The harbor of Lulia is Sweden's fifth largest, transporting over 7 million tons of cargo each year. It is of particular significance for iron ore from the mining district in Kiruna and Gulliver Malmberget. During the winter, sea traffic continues at a virtually unchanged rate. With the assistance of icebreakers. Lulia is the home port of the Swedish icebreaker Armada. This is a view of Lulia. Lulia was already an important harbor in the 13th to 15th centuries. The royal charter was granted in 1621 by King Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden. The original town was situated where Gamlstad, or Old Town, is today. The town had to be moved in 1649 to the current site, due to land elevation that had made the bay too shallow for ships to enter. In 1887, a devastating fire destroyed most of the town, sparing only a few buildings. The Neo-Gothic Cathedral, originally the Oscar Frederick Church, dedicated in 1893, is at 67 meters, 220 ft the tallest building in town. Lulia's commerce and industry is a mix of industry, research, education, trade, and services. The educational programs of the Lulia University of Technology have attracted new businesses, as well as local offices for multinational corporations. Major employers in the city are the SSAB Steelworks and Lulia University of Technology. A Swedish Air Force Wing, F-21, or Norrbotten Air Force Wing, is stationed near Lulia at the neighboring Lulia Airport. Other major employers include Ferruform, a subsidiary of Scania, and Gestamp Hard Tech. Louis Savaricki Iron Aberit Ektibelag, LKAB is a Swedish mining company established in 1890 and has been 100% state-owned since the 1950s. The company mines iron ore at Kiruna and at Malmbergen in northern Sweden and transports it by train to the harbors at Narvik and Lulia. Lulia has a variety of cultural institutions, Amongst them Norbitans Teatern and the Norbitans Museum in 2007 the Cultural House, Kulturens Hus, was opened. A library, concerts, and art exhibitions are all hosted here. Norbitans Museum is regional museum for the country of Norbitans. Gamlstad, in Swedish, Gamlstads Kirkstad, is Sweden's best preserved church town. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. More than 400 cottages, painted deep red, and grouped around a late medieval stone church, have been passed down through the generations and are still used on the weekends and during major religious festivals. 
Gamelstad is located about 10 kilometers upstream from Lulia. On the Lule River, Gamelstad Church Town is the best preserved example of a type of town that was once widespread throughout northern Scandinavia. At the center of the town is an early 15th century stone church surrounded by 424 wood built houses. The houses were only used on Sundays and during religious festivals to accommodate worshippers from the surrounding countryside who could not return home the same day because of the distance and difficult traveling conditions. Lulia has subarctic climate with short cool summers and long cold and snowy winters. Despite its extremely northern latitude, the climate is relatively mild compared to other places at similar latitude because of the Gulf Stream. Here are average monthly temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Lulio. Here are average monthly temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Lulio. Rainfall in Lulio. Here is average monthly precipitation in inches throughout the year in Lulio together with the yearly total. Here is average monthly precipitation in centimeters throughout the year in Lulio together with the yearly total. The money of Sweden. One Swedish kronor equals 0.12 US dollars. And one US dollar equals 8.4 Swedish kronor. 50 Swedish kronor equals 6 US dollars. This is a 100 kronor banknote. Equal to 12 US dollars. Some useful Swedish words and phrases. Table of contents. 